everybody. Let me show you what just got here in the mail. And I think it might make an interesting case that you might face one day. We've got a note 20 and it showed up here as just the logic board. And the claim on the paperwork says that the logic board is missing some connectors. So they want me to put connectors on so that we can get the data out of this note 20. But my question is, well, if I put connectors on there, how do I know that the board itself is going to be able to turn on? Because I'd hate to put the connectors on only to find out that I'm going to end up having to take the data chips off of the board to put it on my working board. So that's where I'm stuck right now because I do have a working note 20. This is what I'm going to use as a source of the connectors but it's also what I would use as a receiver for the chips. This could go one of two ways. Am I putting the good connectors on the bad board or am I putting the chips from the bad board on the good board? So we have to figure out, does this board turn on? So come on back with me and I'll show you exactly how we do that. All right, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is look under the microscope <laughs> That's pretty definitely damaged. All right, we've got one missing connector and we're gonna need that in order to actually be able to see the screen. Uh, this one as well. And over here, that one we might be able to save. I'm not sure. But it looks like we've got three connectors that do have damage. Now what I'm worried about, rather than just replace the connectors, is when I look at the board, I can also see I can also see sort of this damage to the, to the middle part. So I, I'm not 100% confident that the only thing wrong here are these connectors. And that's why I wanna find out if I should, if, that's why I wanna just sort of be able to prove, yeah, this board can turn on before we do the connector work. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is figure out what information do we have for a Samsung Note 20. As you guys know, the Samsungs have a lot less information than the iPhone. So let's look on the board to find the exact board number. A lot of times, if I skip this step, I have lived to regret it. All right, so here we are. Now we can, this is always gonna be printed somewhere on the board. So this says SMN986U, and then we've got all of these other ones, all right? So this is SMN986U, that's what we're looking for. So let's head over to ZXW and cross our fingers and hope Note 20, Note 20, N986U, that's our guy. All right, so let's orient ourselves so that we're looking at the board the same way. So let's move the board around to match ZXW. All right, so I can look at this is going to be a match with the SIM tray here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and identify where is the power management chip, because the main power rail is going to go from the battery. It might go to a chip that creates the main power rail from the battery, but ultimately the main power rail is going to go to the power management chip. So let's see if we can find that just by looking around the board. All right, as I look at the board, this big guy is definitely the CPU. This is definitely the, um, the memory storage IC. Let's flip the board. Now we're looking at the inner layer. And when we look at a chip that looks like this, surrounded by coils, I betcha that is the PMU. I bet this is a PMU. I bet that's a PMU. Any one of these um, might be a, a power management chip. Now, once we find one that we think is likely a PMU, like this guy over here, the next thing I'm gonna do is click around the local capacitors to try to identify the main power rail. So let's just click one at random, click, and then we'll ask, is that the main power rail? So we're going to drill out, we're going to kind of look broadly and say, yeah, for sure, that's the main power rail. Because we can see, yes, it's going to all of those three chips that we said those look like their power management chips. And then it goes to multiple other areas of the board. Now, here's another thing. The CPU requires ultra low power. So you'll never see the main power rail going directly to the CPU, it would electrocute it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the CPU and make sure 
that this power rail doesn't go there, which is gonna be more evidence that it's main. All right, so let's flip the board and look back and say, CPU, all right, does what's highlighted in red go to the CPU? No, excellent. So now we're pretty confident this is our main power rail. So now we need to identify a spot on the main power rail where we can solder a wire. So what we're looking at right here is somewhere under there. Is there, is there like a more open or obvious spot that we could find to solder the wire? Let's look for one that's up here on the top because after we solder the wire, we're then gonna have to ask the board to boot up. So I like it when my wires are on the top side. So let's see, is there any place on the top of the board? So let's flip this over and say uh, up here on the top of the, of the board, Mm, this is only the layer that I'm looking for this piece of the board. So let's go back to our information and see, do we have a board view that is both the top and the bottom board? Let's look around. Um, let's see, not you. Let's click minus that. Let's do that one all. Ah, yeah. So now we can see what we were looking at before. And now we can see the other little top board. Okay, so those are our two connectors that we plug the screen into, so right there. And we can see that this is a piece of the logic board that's soldered to the larger bottom board. All right, so we're looking at, is there something up here? Something maybe near to the connectors where we plug in the screen because that's going to be very accessible, so let's look. So now we're gonna flip this around and say, okay, where's my main power rail? Oh, I have to go back to the beginning. Main power rail, main power rail. Here's my PMU, click a local guy. Is that main? Yes, it goes everywhere, but not to the CPU. That's my guy. Okay, now we can look on this part. All right, here's a, here's a spot right here. So where is this kind of like standalone looking guy? Let's see if we can find it under the microscope. So there's going to be a soldered on shield right around there. And there's going to be a, a long connector and then there should be like a standalone guy. So let's just go look under the microscope and see, can we find that guy? We've got putting our two connectors up here and then we've got our big soldered on shield, and this guy right here. So we could put a wire right here. Now it's a little bit difficult to get a wire on just the, the little nub of, of uh, solder that's left. So I'm going to push away just very gently a little bit of this green paint and expose a little touch of the trace so that we can actually put a wire there. So this should be the main power rail. Now, if we wanted to, we could get our multimeter out and see what the diode mode is there. We would be able to detect a short circuit just, just by doing this. All right, are we ready to solder a wire? Let's do it. Let's get a little bit of flux on there and let's tin that spot. So I'm gonna make my puffy pillow. All right, so I've got a nice juicy spot there for my, for my wire. And I'll go ahead and put a ground wire. I don't have to solder a ground wire. I could just clamp the alligator clamp to ground, but it's easy, easy enough to just solder a little wire right on top of this guy. Now this board has already been to um, a couple of shops, maybe a prior data recovery place. So that's why I just really wanna make sure that this board can turn on before we start doing connectors. Because we don't know when the connectors got damaged. It could have been somewhere along the way. Or maybe that's what was wrong from the beginning. We don't know. All right, let me get my actual little wires. Make sure that's on there really nice and not touching anything else. And then I'll put a big fat ground wire on. Now you do have to worry when you're soldering these wires and then you're going to clamp to them and do stuff that they, you want them to have some flexibility. Don't use one that's like really, really rigid or else if you just kind of like tip it or it 
if, if, it, if there's any pressure on that wire from connecting your alligator clamps, it'll just rip off the, the board, the trace, the thing that you've soldered to along with that wire. So pick a flexible wire. All right, now we are ready to connect our wires to DC power, but then we have to figure out how do we actually turn this thing on? Because in the Samsungs, they don't just automatically turn on if we just connect the charger. We have to actually find the power button spot on the logic board and then press it with tweezers or a power button. So what does that look like? All right, so now we're trying to say, how does the power button itself work? And we can see the power button goes to this set of five dots. So let's look at these set of five dots under the microscope. All right, there's my clicky clicky power button and it's going to this set of five dots. And I can see this one right here, I can read the board and I can see this is ground. So the actual clicking of the power button must be connecting one, two, three, four, one of those guys to ground. So let's see where that actually matches on the logic board. So here's the, the logic board and it kind of snaps in there. So we will tip it over and ah, so now we can see these guys must be, this is ground and you know, connecting maybe all four of them to ground or just one of them, that would be how we would trigger the power button press. So we could connect our wires and then start pressing on these to try to simulate the power button. But to be honest, I think what will be easier is if we take our board with the wires and if we just lay it in here and just actually use the button, that will be the easiest way for this case, which is why I really like it when we can put our wires on the top of the board so that we can do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in here. Now, obviously the connectors here aren't gonna connect because they're all damaged. So the only reason I'm putting it in here is just to be able to use the power button. Now I'm ready to connect to DC power. So let's pull up our DC power. All right, I'm gonna connect positive alligator clamp and ground alligator clamp. And I'm going to press the power button and then we're gonna watch that DC power. There it goes. All right, that looks good so far. I'm gonna let go of the power button. And that looks like normal booting. Let's watch and see, does it look like it boots all the way up? or does it drop back down to zero, like it hangs on the Samsung logo and then clicks off? Looks good. That is good. All right, there we go. That is the point of this video that I really wanted to make, which is how to take a board and figure out does the board even turn on before you do sort of a large connector job? And why is that a big deal? Because I only have one I only have one of these um, working Note 20 board because I'd hate to do that only to end up having to put both of the connectors back on here or all three and then having to transfer the data containing chips. That would introduce a lot of variables. So I wouldn't really, I'd have a, a lot of, a bigger chance to have something happen that I didn't understand. Okay, that's the topic for today, but for fun, let's go ahead and speed through this connector job so that we can see if this Note 20 turns on for data recovery. Okay, now let's harvest the connectors very carefully without burning them up from the working board.
too. Now we might have to come back and get this third one, but let's save that for later. And let's not forget that we need to get these two. Okay, so I'm not sure about this connector that we didn't change, this guy over here, but we've got two connectors on. We believe the board. And see if it looks like it turns on. If not, we'll have to go back and do that third connector. Okay, and now for the moment of truth. Ooh, it looks like it can charge and let's go ahead and press the power button. Can it turn on? I want to see that image. Mmm, that is not what we hoped. Not what we hoped. All right, we'll have to go back and do that third connector. Let me try if I can monkey with it a little bit. Oh yeah, that's this connector. I'm going to just try and put, put my finger on it, pressure. I'm going to hold it right here. That's not a great connector. All right, we'll have to go back and do... Ooh! It's working! Yay! Touch! Woohoo! Password. And if I let go of that connector. Yay. All right, I do feel bad. I don't, I don't like that connection. I'm gonna go ahead and go back and I'm gonna go ahead and go back and replace the janky connector. It's just, I can push my finger on it. It does work, but there's no reason why this board can't be a working phone again. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that connector, but to be cautious when it's somebody's data on the line, first, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in USB and make a full complete smart switch backup just in case something goes wrong when I do that connector, we will have a path to data. So I hope you like that one. I like doing that one because I love how, um, how if you go step by step and you are cautious every step of the way, um, it definitely made sense to proof that board with a wire before doing a giant connector job that could have caused all sorts of additional problems. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you next time. Nice and firm. Perfect. Love to hear the little clicky click. And can you turn on? Yes, there we go. Perfect.